There's some research I'm working on. It's called sense of touch, haptics. So basically, uh, we all human. Ninety-five percent of our contact with other, uh, with outside world is through skin, and those are the what we call a sense of touch. Okay. So, uh, so today I'm going to share with you, sharing with you is about uh, the research I'm doing for the past. More than 15 years when I first studied in Queen's University Belfast. So it's called haptic. So it's leveling the playing field together for the visual impact. When when I joined Sunway, I just a new lecturer here. As today I still a lecturer, just a very small person. So but I want to help the minority people. Okay. So I propose that we can use whatever touch sensation that to get to the visual impair in order to close the IT gaps. We are using uh, a smartphone. I guess some of the audience here you are still using your smartphone, although the show already started. But for VI people, it's very hard for them to use IT. So the next thing uh, we are going to call it the visually impair is that uh, in WHO standard, they are called B1, B2, B3. Okay, it means that there are different blindness. Very hard for us to imagine that. Okay, so I want to get my research to help this kind of minority people so that they can enjoy what we are enjoying. Like what you are still, now maybe some of you put down your phone. Thank you very much to you. And you can listen to me for less than 15 minutes. After that, you can continue using your phone for the rest of the day. Okay, only for me. Okay, so more than 15,000 uh, VI are in registered in Malaysia. And the number actually is much bigger. Okay, you can imagine it could be uh, twenty thousand more not unregistered. Okay, with the government. Okay, so uh, then we move on. So the the sensation, the device, the technology they use by the VI basically are three things. The first one is called sound recorder, or is uh, sometimes they use screen reader. Okay, so don't be surprised. VI they are very good in using smartphone. I can tell you. Okay, it's faster than me. They can go Facebook. Okay, the other one is. Text enlargement, they make the text very big, and then also the tactile. So that tactile means is that the, the screen is like you feel different survey. You can share him with your uh, other friends sitting beside you. The girl you want to know, you can see him with her. Then you feel the texture, a hand texture from her. Okay, same thing to the guy. So uh, the first thing I call about uh, force feedback means happening. You see, if I bend this, okay, this is the force feedback. If I bend my head, it's force feedback. Means quite haptic. Understand? And my, my stomach is very nice, okay? So it's a, have like a drum, okay? Later you'll see the musician playing the drum, I can do like this, if, you, if he allow me to be on the stage, okay? So, um, force feedback basically, because of loss of one sense by the VI, they have to use the sense of touch. I have a story to take you into our research in some university, okay, what we are doing. Many people don't know we are doing fantastic things from the minority, okay? So then the other one is called tecta. I show you already. Then the other one is temperature. When you share hand with people, so we, 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 we invent algorithm to transmit all this force feedback, tactile, and temperature across the internet. So the concept is that we want to get VI or we want to get a sight of people is possible also to enhance your shopping experience. Today you go to Lazada, you share pure 2D images. But we invented 3D images, or you take it as an image first, first, and 3D object. You buy a power bank, you can face, you can feel the shape of the power bank. Okay, how we achieve that, I'll tell you later. So the definition or the research in haptic is start from 2000, uh, 2000. Okay, when I first did my PhD in 2001, there was only 300 research paper. Today, we got 10,000. So that time, I didn't even know what's happening because at that time when I joined the PhD, because they pay me 1,000 pounds, then I joined. Okay? So it's not because I like research. No. I like the money. Okay? Sometimes for the student, you, you are not so sure why you don't do certain things. Don't think too much. You just go. Innovation is not thinking. It's doing. It's think. It's not thinking without action. Just do it. Okay? So this is the device. Later, you will see what I post on the uh, slide. So how can... Haptic technology, basically, uh, to assist the VI. So this is the one of the, uh, what we call a haptic map. When we first come up with a haptic map, means that you can map the Sunway Pyramid shopping mall. You can feel the shop on the map itself. So because for blind people, they cannot see. We let them feel, let's say, where is the uh, supermarket, where is the department store. 
Uh, these are a bit interesting about what we do. So in our lab, uh, we call it home lab, so we have haptic technology. Then these are the researchers in our lab. We have VI, we have uh, assistive technology. So that we also got some drone research. Don't be surprised if the drone following you or we send documents across the department. Okay? So, and then my postgraduate student basically, uh, we, we do TSP, that's a, a big communication. So we design an algorithm for us to transmit false feedback across the internet. That's one research we are doing. Okay, then we also doing the hubos. We design the haptic growth whereby the bright people can use it for multi-point touching. So when they see the object, they can feel the object. They can touch the object. So let's say it's a sphere, it's a uh, cylinder, they can feel the cylinder for learning. We want to cater for the bright people to learn mathematics and science. Okay, so we create a website. It's called Hubbos as well. We put furniture so that we can actually uh, know that uh, the texture of the furniture. You're sitting on the furniture. You're here. But I can give you something for you to feel and touch. Okay, through the website. Of course, we have a, like, we don't call it IKEA or IKEA. We call it IKEA because we want to avoid the copyright problem. So it's online. <laughs> okay, remember, people take the on talking about copyright. So we, you can, uh, bright people can just shop online and then buy them and then send to your house. Before they buy, they can touch it. They can pinch the furniture because your mother might have experienced that they bought something and screen inside the house say, I bought the wrong thing. Okay, so this one you don't have to do it. So further on, we got a grant from government because we want to uh, propose to government to improve the website for accessibility. Google in New York, I visited Harvard last year and MIT last year. So they have an accessibility uh, group, specially designed to improve the accessibility for the blind people. So these are some of the, our current project. Okay, so we call it uh, MCMC project. So our timeline from 2001, 2017 to 2018, Basically, we have gone through a typical research. But the different thing between our research, we talk to human. We call it human factor, human sensation, human-machine collaboration. So all these are very important because when we do a research, we think about human, we think about the minority, we want to help the society. Okay? We don't do for fun. Do for fun is uh, you, you do other things. <laughs> okay? So but we do it with a purpose. Okay, sorry, I can't give any example. But basically, the first component is survey. We had, when we do a research, we have to understand what people want. Okay? So we conduct a survey, pre-survey with the brides, and then we went, we trail around Malaysia, even including East Malaysia. So then we use the touch stylus, this is the, the, the device that we use it for conduct our research methodology. Okay? Then we of course we have got heavy programming. I wrote a the sound, not many IT students here, I think, <laughs> okay? But we are programming, so we have a programming so that we can create a, a Zoomche website. So if you type zoomche.homeslab.com, uh, uh, you'll see the website. This one enable to do you for shopping, okay? Uh, with the uh, grocery shopping. But when you keep inside, uh, the, uh, the object itself will pop up with the device, you can touch it. Say, for example, you want to buy a perfume. You, you can actually touch the shape of the perfume or power bank. But our next research in the other area is the smell research, but that one is out of today's scope. Okay, so this one allows you to feel the object of the apple. So before you buy apple, you can touch the apple first before you buy them. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, Alex is going to take you through uh, on uh, how our technology works. Uh, for visually impaired, so it's a video clip. Hello, my name is Alex, and today I'll be presenting the fruits of our labor for our project, which is the haptically enabled Jomja e commerce website. This website is meant for the visually impaired, notably the partially impaired, as well as the fully blind. However, visual users such as myself will be able to use it as well. First off, I'll be demonstrating some of the assistive features that this website. As. For the partially visually impaired, we, they are able to change the color scheme. For instance, if they require a higher contrast, they could change it to a black background with white wording. In addition to that, there is also the function to increase the font size in order to make the words clearer. For those with a more severe impairment or full impairment, 
we have made this website compatible for screen readers such as NVDA or JAWS, as I'll demonstrate right now. List with six items decrease font visited link. Login visited link. As you can see, every time I press tab, sign up visited link, and the selection moves, the screen reader reads it out for the people who are unable to see the screen. Now, the most major contribution of our project is the use of haptic technology. This haptic technology is meant to replace visual representations which the normally sighted people usually rely on. So let's just say the visually impaired person wants to purchase an apple and let's just say for hypothetical reasons that they don't know what an apple is. They could rely on verbal cues, for instance, this is an apple, it is slightly spherical, it is red in color. However, these descriptions are pretty limited and we intend to use haptic technology to give them the information on how the shape is. So, by clicking this touch me right over here, this would initiate a download of an X3D file, which will be open on uh, an open source software called H3D Viewer. And through the use of this single point force feedback haptic stylus, we will be able to feel the apple. As you can observe, the virtual stylus moves in line with the physical stylus, and every time I come to contact with the surface of the object, uh, the movement of the stylus is restricted, thereby creating a spatial representation of an apple right over here. And this is how we intend to use haptics for e-commerce. However, usage of this technology is not only limited to e-commerce, and we intend to expand this usage into other fields, as well as increase the capacity of our haptic technology, such as using ultrasonics or perhaps multi-point force feedback. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good day. So basically, uh, some people say we are creating a new Alibaba uh, commercial model, but we are not that big. We do small things. We don't know what happens in the future. Okay, so we want to change the way that how uh, VI people shop shop online. So because the current website are not so, basically it's not enough for them. As well as for any uh, perhaps any other area that they can use it for education, for learning, uh, for training. So all this might help them. So when we do research, we don't know whether we, it can lead to a bigger picture. We don't know. Okay, don't ask me, can this thing make money tomorrow or not? I tell you, cannot now. Okay? So, uh, don't, don't expect that. So, further on, uh, our student involvement actually from different areas. Uh, we have students from computing, of course, and then we have students from accounting and finance. Also, we have students from psychology and ADPP. So, the lab itself has a multi <laughs> different disciplinary people working together. So that, that's who we are. And then the students are pretty much involved in developing all these uh, new technology that we are talking about. So, uh, of course, beyond outside some university, we are collaborating with different society, so that the, especially the Bryce City, NCBN, also the MAB. So um, they are heavily depend on donation. I just give some advertisement. Please open your wallet and donate some money to them. <laughs> so in, in this case, uh, no, no, you don't have to do that. I just, so we, we are visiting uh, DM so that we got our research project. We pay some stipend to their, uh, to their bride participant, so they are happily taking photo with me. Okay, so <laughs> we still need funding. <laughs> okay, so the testing itself also going on. Okay, so uh, if you can see one photo now, I stopped for a while. This gentleman actually from UK, and now uh, he he just accidentally te tested by us because he's supposed to be in Japan. He's a programmer. So my concept is that when we do something, uh, we we want to help people. When you help people accidentally, we got someone come out to talk to us. He said, you guys are doing this? Yes. I said, yes. And then, you know that I'm a programmer? Yes, you're blind, but you're a programmer. But are you doing something for the blind society in Malaysia? I said, yes. Then how come I don't know? Okay. <laughs> so I tell him, because our publicity is not that strong, but we do small things. So he very happily tested by her, and he commented our website and invention, 
We do invention, we do invention, investment, and we deliver. He said that it's very good, it's fantastic. So he fly back to Japan. Okay? So of course, we are some local tester. Some of the Ipan, Malay, Katasan, Tusun, and Indian, all different uh, race we tested on them for the blind society. Okay, we tested on teacher as well, okay, and uh, in Sapa. Okay, so the conclusion of our research basically uh, is telling us that uh, the haptic technology basically allow us to improve, okay, basically to improve uh, the web accessibility, it will help the VI to shop better. Okay, beside the audio, as I said, the audio is just the voice now you're hearing. Okay, the visual is the one you're seeing. The touch sensation is your skin that's touching the chair. So all these are sensation. Actually, in fact, we have one more research called odor, the smell. Okay, we are doing that. Sooner or later, we got another branch, it's called taste. You want to deliver some pizza to your house, we can go through internet to deliver to your house. Okay, but you still pay me, I send the pizza to your house, you just taste the pizza only. Okay, virtually. Okay, so this is the concept. Okay, the concept is very important that we should always think about different things. Not think out of the box, it think out of the building. Okay, box is too small. Okay, <laughs> don't say think out of the box anymore, think out of the building. Or even you want to good talker, you think out of the universe. Okay, so we, we want to help the bride so that uh, they can become a future programmer, even politician, you know what I mean? Even the uh, vice chancellor, perhaps, okay? So, so I make my conclusion, because uh, haptic technology is good in assistive technology that we are talking about, so uh, we propose to use this technology, it's originally from MIT, I got a chance to visit the lab who produced the device, and I was amazed that uh, that there's an opportunity last year given by Harvard Travel Grant. And then also, uh, we, we want to say that multimodality is very important. If you are a finance accounting student, please join me, okay? Because we already got students inside. And then we want to make sure that the social involvement of the brides, okay? We cannot leave everyone behind, okay, including the bride. Not to say left everyone behind, but excluding the bride. So we leave everyone, okay? No one should be afraid of technology, afraid of IT, afraid of engineering, okay? So basically, then it should be equal opportunity because uh, we are human. And we created this and we should let everyone try it, okay? So no matter uh, what kind of background you have. So in, in technology, it's a small thing, but human factor is basically is uh, very, very important. When you come to work, no matter what kind of background you have, please consider human being. Of course, you want to talk to me more, you want to sponsor me and my lab, or the summit you see, you are welcome to talk to me now. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay.